Welcome back to Tipsy Whiskey Shenanigans. I'm Steven, and today, tonight, whenever the heck you're watching this, we are getting into my top five bourbons, the top five bourbons I have in my collection. But before we get into this, please do us that favor, like, comment, subscribe, also, a word from today's sponsor. This video is brought to you by Z-Biotics. If you have ever skipped the gym after a night of drinking, just like I do about every single week right after my live streams, well then you need Z-Biotics. Z-Biotics pre-alcohol probiotic is the world's first genetically engineered probiotic. It was invented by PhD scientists to tackle rough mornings after drinking. Here's how it works. When you drink, alcohol gets converted into a toxic byproduct in the gut. It's this byproduct, not dehydration, that's to blame for your rough next day. Zbiotics produces an enzyme to break this byproduct down. It's designed to work like your liver, but in your gut, where you need it the most. Just remember to drink Zbiotics before you drink alcohol, drink responsibly, and get a good night's sleep to feel your best tomorrow. Try Zbiotics for yourself today. Go to zbiotics.com slash tipsy, use a QR code down there, and use the code tipsy at checkout to get 15% off on your first order. Also, Zbiotics is 100% money back guaranteed. So if for whatever reason you are unsatisfied, they will refund you, no questions asked. We're gonna head to zbiotics.com slash tipsy and use the code tipsy at checkout to get 15% off your first order. Thank you again, Zbiotics, for sponsoring this video, but let's get back to it. Top five bourbons in my collection. Let's freaking go. Rules for this, pretty freaking simple. Needs to be a bourbon I own and needs to be in the top five of that. Is there any particular order for this? Not entirely. I literally just went through my whiskeys, which real hard to do if we're being completely honest because I have a lot of bourbon and it was really hard to cut it down to just five, but this isn't one of those like just five categories. This is just like my five favorite ones. Like what is the five best juices I have? Putting these in no particular order except for the first one because the first one is a freaking god of a whiskey. This is the most amazing whiskey I own and it's also significantly more expensive than most of the other bourbons I own just because, you know, I don't really feel like you need to spend this much money on whiskey nowadays to get quality whiskey. That being said, this one was well worth the 200 bones I spent on it, and I pull it out for very limited occasions. Wild Turkey, Master's Keep, 17 years old, bottled in a bond. This, this bottle, this bottle, this beautiful dust covered bottle that I haven't pulled out in a hot minute because I'm saving the rest of it for a special occasion is fantastic. It is 100 proof, which for me isn't always the perfect proof per se. It's a perfect sipping proof for like just casually sipping, but for nerding out, you know I'm a proof for. I like the proof, but this one, because of the age, that 17 years old in oak, that 17 years really seeped in and really brought a lot, a lot of intensity and a lot of flavor to that 100 proof, so it drinks way above that proof. Not like in heat, but like in complexity, it is a really, really complex, intense whiskey. This isn't for everyone, because this is a super ultra-aged whiskey. It is very oaky, very Luden's cough drop, like cherry, sweetness, sweet oak, but it is amazing. Such an amazing mouthfeel, such a great bottle. That is by far my favorite bottle in my collection. And the day I drink the last sip of that, I'm gonna cry a little, but it's okay. But then after that, and again, these the rest in no particular order, but after that one, we got my favorite bourbon from 2022, Woodford Batch Proof 2022. 118.4 proof of like chocolate syrupy pancakes Woodford Reserve. This is the greatest, the greatest Woodford Reserve slash Brown Foreman product I've even remotely had my lips touch. This stuff is freaking phenomenal. Why don't they just release Woodford Reserve like this normally? Like this stuff is amazing. 
this was so much better than even the previous batch. It has a lot of like chocolatey notes, a lot of syrupy notes, as well as this like really nice banana note that you get on those Brown Foreman products. Honestly, this is like that perfect Friday night pour, celebratory type pour, which because in case if you didn't notice, I don't have a lot of super limited allocated bottles. This is more of like a really, really good Friday night pour for me. Because, you know, whiskey's meant to be drank. But this is fantastic. I really wish they made all of the Woodford Reserve products like that because that is a freaking monster. And after that, a brand I've seemingly been talking a lot and lot more about recently, and that is Knob Creek. Specifically, this amazing, beautiful Knob Creek single barrel I have. This is a 14-year-old Knob Creek single barrel. 120 proof. 14 years old, this is phenomenal, phenomenal. The viscosity, the viscosity you get on 14 years old and 120 proof is ridiculous. Just absolutely lights out. It is everything you love in like the 12 year old, just cranked up an extra 20 proof points with a little bit more of a darkness on it. A little bit more of a darkness, not too much darker, but it's so much thicker, viscous, and explosive comparatively. This is a lights out bottle. And the most amazing thing about this bottle, got this for like 50 bucks, 55, 60 bucks, somewhere around there. Greatest deal I've ever had in the whiskey world. Greatest. I, I can't even remotely compare. Everything else on this list is at least going to cost you around 80 bucks. I mean, this probably should have in theory, but it didn't. It didn't because this stuff was phenomenal. I still can't believe I got that bottle. The greatest freaking deal ever. But after that one, getting into a bottle, you all know I'm a huge fanboy over, so you kind of probably expected it, but it is going to be Elijah Craig Batch B520. B520 was my end all be all batch. It is the best mix of complexity and proof and age without being like overly whelming. Some of the biggest issues I have with some barrel proof bourbons out there, especially super old ones or super high proof ones, is it becomes a point where the proof is just too much. You know, coy hell, it's clapping your cheeks a little bit, it's over that hazmat, or it's just about to get there, 135 point something or other. And this specific Elijah Craig barrel proof, I remember being the perfect balance of quality as well as that intensity, that proof. You didn't get any extra ethanol burn. You didn't get any extra ethanol like intensity. Like one of the biggest problems I have with the Jack Daniels single barrel barrel proofs, even though I love them, I talk about them all the time. Sometimes a little bit too much proof with not as much complexity as that proof jumps out at you at that 135 sometimes. So this is that perfect balance of that Elijah Craig intense flavor profile, but not being overly hot and proof just for proof's sake. This was great complexity, great flavor, that chocolate peanut butter, that bougie Reese's peanut butter cup, but without being too ridiculously hot at the same time. This bottle, absolutely fantastic. Like I said, it's really hard to put the rest in any particular order because I think all of these are so phenomenal. But my last one, number five on my list, and again, in no particular order outside of it's definitely underneath the master's keep because that's a special place in my heart. But after that, the only craft whiskey on this list that scratches not one, but two witches of mine. Because in case you've uh, noticed, a big trend of me is liking barrel proof whiskey and ultra aged barrel proof or high age, you know, like 14 years old, 12 years old. I've no idea what that Woodford is, but I can't imagine it is young juice at all. So there's a few other itches I just need to scratch and that is Southwest aging style and finish. So the last one scratches both of those and it is gonna be the iron root apothesis. Iron root apothesis. I really, really enjoyed this bottle. I didn't expect this bottle to remotely be 
super high on my list of bottles that I would love because I got a lot of really, really good stuff in here. And that's not saying anything bad about Iron Root. It's just actually it's saying a lot of good stuff because it's it was unexpected. But like, I have a lot of stuff that traditionally should carry that weight. Like, I prefer this over my Stag, my Stag Junior. I'd rather have this because this is fantastic. And again, it scratches both of those itches that I need, which is a finished whiskey as well as something that's aged in like Texas, Arizona, so on and so forth. So I freaking love this bottle. This is their bourbon whiskey finish in Pinau de Chantes casks. Literally cannot pronounce that at all, but it's 112.2 proof and it's fantastic. It has those like finishy, whiny cask flavors that like red fruit, the grapiness in it, as well as that Southwest kind of like corn, aggressive kind of oak flavoring that you get in there. And I'm a sucker for that. I mean, I'm an Arizona whiskey kind of guy. I've been drinking a lot of Arizona whiskey and Texas whiskey just on its own recently. Like those have been my two go-tos. And this bottle is the king of Southwest aging style for me. This is my favorite Texas Southwest aging bourbon whiskey of all time. This is lights out, freaking killed it. So those are my five favorite bourbons in my collection. This was fun. I do encourage anyone else with the channel because again, this was difficult. Make your own list, make your own list. This was a lot of fun, very difficult to kind of cut it down to just five. So I challenge anyone who has a channel who's still watching, try to make your own list. It'd be a little fun. But that is a wrap for today's video. Please do me that favor, like, comment, and subscribe. That helps us out a ton and we seriously appreciate the support. Leave a comment down below what you thought about my list. Also, what would your list be, you know? What would your list be? I'm excited to see like what are people's top whiskeys of all time. Also, check out the Facebook, Instagram, and the Patreon. Links for that are all down there below. That is a wrap for today's video. Cheers, y'all. We'll see you later.